Buddha once said that all things are rooted in desire. Everything you experience, everything you do comes out of a desire of some sort. We sometimes think that he said desire or craving is the cause of suffering, and that that's a bad thing. We should stop desiring. Well, something you just can't just stop doing. Because after all, the path to the end of suffering is something you do, and it is based on desire. There's right resolve. And if you look carefully there in right effort, the Buddha says to generate desire, to abandon skillful qualities that have already arisen and to prevent unskillful qualities that haven't arisen yet from arising. And then you generate the desire to give rise to skillful qualities and then to maintain them. So you need desire in order to practice a path. Sometimes they say there's a path of no desire, but it's just sitting where you are and not doing anything. It's like being dead. Or simply trying to develop equanimity for whatever comes up. The Buddha says that's limited equanimity. It's a path that goes nowhere. You look at the Buddha himself. What kind of person was he? He looked at his life and he saw that it wasn't satisfactory. He wanted something better than the happiness that he had. And he was willing to sacrifice everything that went against that desire. And of course, what was everything that went against that desire? It was other desires. This means that our path is one where we have to sort out the different desires in our minds. And we can decide either to be buffeted around by the different desires. Some blow, they're like wind. Some of them blow west, some of them blow north, south, east. Some of them are whirlwinds. Or you can decide that, there, decide that there's one or two big desires that you want to hold true to. And they use those desires as your standard for decide, deciding which other desires you're going to follow. That's what right resolve is all about. You look at the way you cause suffering and you decide, do I want to continue doing this? I have the choice to stop. And you look at the kind of desires that lead to suffering. The big one is desire for sensual pleasure. And then there's the desire for ill will. You want to see other people suffer. That's unskillful. Or the desire to be harmful. Not just sit around wishing for them to suffer. You decide you're going to go out and actually do something to harm them, or to harm yourself. Desires of this sort, even though they may seem attractive in one way or another. They really cause suffering. The one we're most resistant to is that giving up the desire for essential pleasure. I mean, giving up the desire for ill will, we can see that that's a noble thing, something you really would aspire to. Giving up the desire to be harmful, that's easy to aspire to as well. Whether you can follow through with it or not, that's another matter. But it's easy to see in the abstract that those are good things. The desire to give up sensuality, that's something else. After all, it was because of sensual desire that we were born on this plane, that we took birth as human beings. But the Buddha said the main reason we are so attached to this is we don't, don't see that there's any other escape from pain. 
when pain comes along, we rush for some way to relieve the pain. And sensual pleasure seems to be just the thing. What we need is another alternative. That's what right concentration is about. Learning to develop a sense of ease, a sense of pleasure, a sense of rapture and fullness simply by the way you breathe. This is giving you an important alternative. Once you've learned to master that kind of pleasure, when you can tap into it whenever you need it, or if you can't do it all the time, at least once you have tasted this pleasure, then you look at the pleasure that comes from sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, you realize it doesn't have all that much to offer. It has a lot of drawbacks as well. You look at all the things you have to do in order to get the, the pleasures you want, the sensual pleasures you want. See how you get yourself tied down with other people. the jobs you need in order to maintain that level of pleasure, and then you realize it's not yours. So the Buddha said it's like borrowed goods. It can be taken away at any time. It's one of the reasons we practice right concentration, is to put the mind in the right place, where it can see that sensual desire is not all it's cracked up to be. And it really is something you might want to let go of, learn how to give up your attachment for it. Now this requires a strong desire of another kind. The Buddha talks about the basis for success, and one of the basis for success in practicing right concentration is desire, wanting to do the practice, wanting to get the mind to settle down, wanting that sense of inner rapture, inner pleasure. And desire of this sort is a good thing. It's part of the path. The trick here is learning how to not let the desire get in the way. As the Buddha said, when desire is too lax, the path gets lackadaisical. When it's too strong, sometimes you go off the path. You're too anxious to get to the end, so anxious that you actually don't do what's required. You've got to learn how to focus on the path itself. Direct your desire there. You want to do it right. As with any job, the desire to finish the job should be focused on each step as you do it. Don't give in to the, the old habit of just rushing, rushing, rushing through things. That's when desire gets in the way. Think of whatever skills you've mastered. You have to want to master the skill in order to do it, so that you could put in the effort, stick with it, practice, practice, practice. But you have to learn how to balance that desire so that you can actually pay attention to what you're doing while you practice. Instead of just thinking about how much you want to do well, you actually focus on the steps. If you're learning a musical instrument, you focus on your scales, you focus on your intonation, you focus on your fingering. All the little bits and pieces that go into mastering the skill. And that way you take your desire and you focus it where you want it to be. On actually putting together the causes that are going to lead to the results that you want. And that way desire becomes your friend. It's the same way on the path. We want peace of mind, but if all you do is sit around and think about peace of mind, peace of mind, how much you want peace of mind, and it's not coming. That kind of desire is not helpful. Let's say if you want peace of mind, okay, what do you have to do to get it? Sit down, focus on the breath, each breath as it comes. It 
learn how to make this breath comfortable, and then the next breath comfortable. And if some voice in your mind asks, well, when is this going to get the peace of mind I want? Say, be quiet for the time being. This is where it comes from, in actually doing the path, doing the practice. And this way desire becomes your friend and not your enemy, because you learn how to fine-tune it. So this is not a path of giving up craving. It's a path of learning to be selective in which desires you want, which desires really are your friends, lead to the, the results that you really want. And then learning the skills that you need, and strengthening the skillful desires and weakening the unskillful ones. And someday this will get you to the point where you really don't need desire anymore. That's the Buddha's promise. And it's not because you become dried out and cynical. It's because you've actually reached something that satisfies every possible desire of the mind. Because after all, desire aims at happiness, and when you get a true happiness that doesn't depend on conditions, it's there all the time. What more would you desire? It's at that point that you can put the path aside. You know the image of the, the raft. When you get to the other shore, you can let go of the raft. You don't have to carry it on your head as you go along. But while you're still crossing over the river, you don't want to let go of the raft. You hold on to it. And the desire of right resolve, the element of desire in right effort, these are things that you hold on to. Because if you let go, you drown. But it's by holding on to the raft that you get to the other shore. So don't look at life as a question of using reason versus desire. It's actually reasonable desires against unreasonable desires, skillful desires against unskillful desires. That's the battle that's going on in the mind. And the way the Buddha set out the path is to help us side with the reasonable ones, side with the skillful ones. So we can reach that point that actually every desire aims at. Every desire aims at happiness. The problem is we misconstrue the happiness, we misconstrue what's going to work getting there. So the path is here to help us get a clear idea of what true happiness might be like, and of what works and what doesn't work along the way. That way you can take that principle that all things are rooted in desire. You can use that principle to your own advantage, to your true advantage. Until you can finally reach something that isn't rooted in desire, the one thing, nirvana. That's when you can put the whole issue of desire aside.